Wyatt Moore were Florida natives and civil rights activists who paid the ultimate price for the freedoms they won for their community when they were killed by the Ku Klux Klan in their home on Christmas night in 1951. By the time of their death, Florida had the highest number of registered black voters, far more than any other Southern state, and ultimately the reason behind the couple's unfortunate deaths. After graduating from high school in Jacksonville, Harry became a fourth grade teacher at a black elementary school in Brevard County, where he met Harriet Vita Sims, a former school teacher who was selling life insurance. The couple married soon after, completing their college education at Bethune-Cookman College and eventually both returning to teaching. In the 1930s, the Moors began organizing for the NAACP in Central Florida and launched a legal struggle that eventually won equal pay for black and white teachers. In 1941, Harry became president and later executive director of the Florida State NAACP, which under his leadership grew to more than 10,000 members in more than 60 branches across the state. In 1944, Thurgood Marshall won Smith versus Allwright in the U.S. Supreme Court, which ruled that all white primary elections are unconstitutional. With blacks now allowed to vote in elections, the Moors organized the Progressive Voters League of Florida, to which Harry became its president as well. Florida's voter registration procedures were not as restrictive as those of neighboring Georgia and Alabama, and within a few years, the Moors managed to register over 100,000 Black voters, increasing Black registration from 5% to 31% of those eligible. Their slogan was, a voteless citizen is a voiceless citizen. Harry grew deeply involved in the 1949 Groveland rape case in which four young Black men were accused of raping a white woman. Following the arrest of the three men, a white mob of more than 400 people rampaged through Groveland's Black neighborhood, leading authorities to call on the National Guard to restore order. After an all-white jury convicted the men and sentenced them to death, Harry led a successful campaign to overturn the wrongful convictions. In 1951, the Supreme Court granted the appeal and ordered a new trial. But while driving two of the defendants to a pretrial hearing, the sheriff of Lake County, Willis McCall, shot them, killing one and critically injuring the other. The Moors called for the sheriff's suspension and indictment for murder, but no charges were ever brought against McCall. Six weeks later, on Christmas night and the couple's 25th anniversary, a bomb exploded under the bedroom of Harry and Harriet Moore. Harry died on the way to the hospital, becoming the first ever NAACP official to be assassinated. Harriet died in hospital nine days later. Despite a nationwide outcry and a massive FBI investigation, no one was arrested for the couple's killing. It took more than half a century before the case was reopened and four Ku Klux Klan members were identified as being directly involved in the murders. Langston Hughes composed a poem, The Ballad of Harry Moore, in the wake of the couple's death. And in 1952, the NAACP awarded Harry the Spring Arn Medal for Outstanding Achievement by an African American. In the 21st century, several landmarks in Brevard County bear the name, including a park, a justice center, a highway, and a post office. The Moore home was also declared a Florida Heritage Landmark. And if you didn't know, now you know. <laughs>